Yeah, seriously. You just can't make this stuff up. Round number two on the K1 snap ring. My replacement transmission that went in at 2,600 miles to replace the first snap ring failure, original trans, was manufactured in August. Guess what? There were still bad snap rings in the transmissions that were sitting on pallets as replacements. So, back to the dealer we go for round number two. Well, there goes the snap ring, K1 snap ring on transmission number two. Let's hope we can just make it back to the barn. <laughs> well, I got fifth gear, no lockup, and I'm trying to make it home. Here we got temperature, keeping an eye on that. We're gonna see if we can make it. And unfortunately, this is round two. I can't believe it. Transmission number two just blew the snap ring. So yeah hopefully we can make it to the barn under our own power i did on the last transmission unfortunately i got experience with this um so yep get back to the barn drop this one off switch trucks and deal with this later now when your camry decides to spit out the k1 snap ring and blow itself up you just take it to the dealership and drop it off no big deal now when you have a service truck, a commercial truck, well, it becomes a process of dropping it off the dealership. Case in point, get all the tools, all out of the truck, all in the garage with the Christmas decorations, there's the hitch. So you get all that stuff out of there, you put it in a cardboard box so that none of it gets stolen, right? And then you bring it home, and now you gotta go put all that stuff back. Got the truck back, got it picked up. It was at the dealership for 16 days, um, which I don't think is bad at all, really. Uh, and it's interesting, you know, the situation is definitely handled differently this go around and the first go around. Um, I had, I was one of the early trucks that went down for the K1, K1 snap ring failure at uh, 2,600 miles, which was the beginning of October of last year, of 2022, uh, I lost the K1 snap ring in the original transmission. Uh, took it in, dropped it off the dealership, exact same process. You can watch the whole video on that uh, posted. I'll put that in the description. And anyway the repair for that for it at that time was a total re transmission replacement which was i was happy about i was firm in wanting a transmission that was built in japan at the ace and Siki plant like it was supposed to be so i got a transmission delivered on the pallet they slapped it in and away i went and there was a big question there of, well, that transmission was built in August. It's like, okay, what's gonna happen with this one? Does this one have a good snap ring or a bad snap ring? And I made it to like 5,000 miles. I thought, oh, that's a good sign. All right, that's a good sign. Made it to seven, 8,000, okay. And made it to 10,000 miles. And I thought, boy, you know, it's quite a few miles. I got to 19,000, which would be 16,400 miles is what I put on transmission number two. And it spit the snap ring. What happened was, is it went to downshift. I was traveling uphill, no trailer, no nothing, truck was empty. And it went to downshift from fourth, I believe it tried to go to second, and boom, it blew it out. I could almost feel it happen. I knew exactly what happened right when it happened. So, what's interesting about what was done this time is 
they replaced it. They have there's a there's a whole TSB on this now. A lot has developed since then, but now Mopar has come up with a clutch kit, is what it's called, and the part number is six eight six three seven five three four dash AA, and that is the repair kit, repair clutch kit for the S sixty nine RC ASIN, and. I don't have a lot of information on what that kit is. I couldn't seem to get it. When you look up that part number, you don't find any images, no pictures, no descriptions, just that it costs $1,225 if you can find it in stock at this time at the filming of this video currently. So it does, I believe, at the very least, contain some seals all the forward clutches and everything for gears one through four at the bare minimum. So my dealership put that kit in, put fresh fluid in it, said the valve body, the converter, all that was fine. Everything else was, fu was fine, reverse and gear five and six. Put it back together and sent me on my way. So we'll see what happens. I But I'm pretty confident that they had said they had done numerous ones with this kit. And so I'm pretty confident that the technician at the dealership knows what he's doing. So give it a go, see what happens. I'm about a thousand miles into this rebuild. So far, so good. Truck acts like, or I should say the transmission acts like it ever did, same. So everything's pretty good. Now, at this point, with this whole K1 snap ring debacle, I, I think for the most part, um, I was fortunate in having the first failure at the beginning of the cycle. I would say maybe I was one of the first 10%. And I'm probably now the number two is more so, I bet 75% of them have broke by now. So hopefully, like I say, hopefully this deal is coming to an end. Um, there's only so many of the ASINs that are out there with the broken snap ring. But if it does happen to you, one thing I will say is don't go easy on RAM. If you got to rent a vehicle, get a hold of them. Their customer service, RAM support, here's the thing. RAM support, you'll get very frustrated. You can't hardly understand anybody. Uh, at first, but if long as you can get a case created and then you can get yourself a case number, then you get transferred to a different part, part, uh, different department to FCA directly rather than RAM support. Okay. Um, then you get assigned a case manager. Then you have a person that speaks clearly and you can deal with somebody. And like I said, if you got to rent a vehicle, go after them on that. You want your rental compensated for because, you know, this is nonsense to have this kind of a huge failure um, and leave so many people hanging for so many days with their new trucks sitting in the dealership. So, like I said, hopefully we've gone through this. So we've unfortunately worked our way through the cycle of this thing, and this will go down in the history books as, you know, one of the... One of the many, as the decades have gone on, the different things that we've, uh, you know, VP44 failures, 53 blocks, um, you know, that sort of thing. K1 snap ring, it'll go down. We'll all remember and tell stories about it later on. So, but hey, like I said, don't go easy on RAM. If you need a rental, they'll pay for it. I got a check headed my way for 16 days worth of rent for a rental vehicle. And uh, you bet. So, hey. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it kind of filled you in on what's really going on with this K1 deal and kind of what the steps are through it. I appreciate you watching. Please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe. Don't be afraid to give me a comment and tell me about your K1 experience. See you on the next one.